I'm Jason McIntosh with McIntosh Applied Engineering. I'm going to show you how to do a measurement with the surface impedance measurement apparatus, also known as SEMA. This is the case that you receive. Inside there's going to be a sheet of paper showing the original contents of the case. There's also a sound card driver and then the actual measurement hardware. This is the SEMA controller. It contains the data acquisition hardware for the measurement process. It requires a power supply and a USB connection to your computer. There are also two measurement devices inside of the case. The larger one is the MAE-130. It has a one inch measurement area. The black disc is the area over which the surface impedance is measured. There's also the MAE-131. It has a 12 millimeter diameter measurement area for measuring acoustical impedance. And this is the one we're gonna to use today. It has a larger frequency range than the, than the larger 130, but the 130 is better for lower frequency measurements. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and set it up. Controller, 131, and we're also gonna need the 131's calibration volumes. I've already got the power supply ready to go and a USB connector. When you plug the USB in, you'll hopefully hear this enumerate on your PC. Then I'm going to go ahead and plug the DB9 connector on the 131 into the front panel of the control electronics. And we're now ready to go. So I'm going to go over to the software which controls all this, which is Ares. I've got it running here. Ares consists of a series of modules for doing modeling and measurements. We're going to create an instance of the surface impedance measurement module. When you run it, uh, first thing you're going to want to do is to select the setup tab and make sure you've got the correct uh, device uh, selected. In this case, we're using the 131. You're also going to want to make sure that the controller has been found. And finally, enter an appropriate temperature for the air that you're uh, working in, the room temperature. Next, we'll go to the acquisition tab. There are two acquisitions that can be performed. One is a device calibration, and the other is the actual impedance measurement. We're going to go ahead and do a device calibration just to show how it's done. So we've got the 131 selected already and set up. We're going to hit perform measurement. Aries will communicate with electronics and then ask you to place the 50 millimeter calibration volume on the 131. So we'll go back over to our setup. Here's the 131 and this is the 50 millimeter calibration volume. There's some text embossed into the plastic telling you that. To hold this in place, I've used rubber bands in the past, but I've started to use putty. I want to seat the 50 millimeter volume on the SEMA device well and then put the putty around it. It ensures I don't have a leak between the plastics and it holds it in place nicely. So now I'm going to go back over to Aries and I'm going to click OK, indicating that I've placed it on the 131 and Aries will take a minute or so now and do the 50 millimeter calibration. You'll probably hear a slow swept sign come out of the 131 speaker while uh, the hardware is configuring itself for the best uh, signal to noise ratio for the measurement. It'll probably sweep a couple times.
at least initially. Okay, it's performed the 50 millimeter calibration and it's now asking for the five millimeter calibration volume. So we'll come back over and take the 50 off and put the five millimeter calibration volume on. Go back over to Aries and press OK. You'll hear a higher frequency sweep as it does the five millimeter calibration. So when the measurement's done, the dialog box will pop up indicating it's completed the calibration procedure. And you will see a calibration graph in the main ARIES window, and it will update the sound card's maximum peak to base input level. What I'd recommend is while you're getting used to using these devices, check that the calibration curve is somewhat close to what's in the manual for the for the for the SEMA module. To pull the manual up, you can go to the help menu, select surface impedance measurement manual. It will find it on your system and uh, we can page through here until we see a calibration curve. Here's a calibration curve for the 131 and they look similar and the levels are about right. So uh, we're fine, fine, fine with that. Next, we're going to perform a measurement. So I'm going to pull the measurement type down and select impedance measurement. What I've selected to measure today is the volume. Let's go back over to the measurement area. The volume of just a simple 10 ounce glass jar. Uh, it's, a, it's actually a jelly jar, and we're going to measure the impedance into this and get an idea of what the cavity modes uh, look like in terms of the impedance this presents. So I want to put the 131 on this glass jar, but I need something to help me interface this better. So what I have is an aluminum plate, 4 millimeters thick, with a 15 millimeter diameter hole. So I'm going to putty this onto the jar, and I'm going to putty this seam onto the, onto the aluminum plate. So I'm going to go ahead and put the seam against the plate to kind of visually center the black measurement area in the middle of my 15 millimeter hole in the plate. Make sure it's down there good. And now I'm going to grab some more putty. I'm going to uh, roll this out. and ring the lip of the jar with the putty. Put the aluminum plate over top of the jar, press down firmly. So now I've sealed the SEMA device to the jar through this plate. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the measurement on that. Back over on Aries. I'm going to specify the diameter uh, the, of the area that we're measuring as 42 millimeters. I've already measured that. That's about the opening of the glass jar. I've set the frequency range to be as wide as possible, 20 hertz to 10 kilohertz. I've got log spacing off. Uh, the modes will generate a lot of high frequency detail and log frequency is good for uh, enhancing the low frequency detail. So I'm going to leave that off. And I'm going to change the data set name here to be 10 ounce glass jar. And I'll hit perform measurement. You should hear the swept sign run. It may have to run a couple times again. And when it completes, it'll show the impedance in this graph here. Okay, Aries has finished.
with the measurement. We'll hit done, and we see all of the large impedance spikes due to the interior cavity modes of that glass jar. The glass walls are very stiff, and so these cavity modes have very high Q on them. And if we zoom in, we zoom in at the low frequencies, we see, try that again. We zoom in at low frequencies, we see the one over J omega effect with the imaginary part of the impedance indicating that we have a sealed volume. You can actually use this to compute the volume of the air in the jar if you'd like. So now we've got a measurement of the, of the jar without any damping in it. I'm going to add damping and show its effect on these uh, cavity modes. So let's go back over to the measurement area. Take the aluminum plate off. And I have a piece of felt here. Just a regular piece of felt kind of chopped up a little bit. I want to put that in the glass jar. So it's, you know, maybe about 20% filled with that felt material. That's going to act to dampen the acoustical modes, cavity modes of that jar. And I'm going to put the putty back on. And let's go back to Aries. Now I'm going to change the data set name and I'm going to add with damping material onto the data set name and repeat the measurement. It's taking a couple sweeps to uh, get the measurement. And now we see the impedance into the jar with the damping material present. We still see the effect of cavity modes, but they're much more damped than previously seen. And at low frequencies again, let me zoom in here, look at the behavior under 500 hertz, we see the J omega effect. So we haven't changed the, the low frequency volume impedance effect at all, but we have dampened those modes out considerably. I'll go over to plotting tab. I'm going to select both of these for plotting. And you can tell that the impedance with the damping is much less than without the damping. Those volume cavity modes present a tremendous impedance spike at those at those modes, whereas uh, with the damping material, even a little bit of damping smooths them out considerably. Now I'd like to show what you can do with this impedance in, in mating it up with the modeler. So I'm going to export these impedance curves to some files. So I'm going to select, go to the Files Clipboard tab, select Save, and I'm just going to save them into this directory, select the next one, save, and I'll hit save. So both of them have been exported to my directory. Now I'm going to go up and create a modeler module. In this modeler module, I'm going to make a simple speaker, radiating speaker uh, model. But I'm going to, for the rear of the speaker, I'm going to I'm going to use the impedances that we just measured. Rather than creating a volume element here in the Aries modeler, I'm going to import that impedance data into this resistance, acoustical resistance. And I need to put a pressure release on the other side. I also need to put a radiation element in front of the speaker. And I'm just going to use the default parameters for the speaker and the radiation element. They're not going to be optimized any means, but uh, there'll be uh, there'll be something to to 
to see what the effects are. And finally, I need a graph to view what's going to happen. I'm going to go to this resistance element now, and I'm going to, for the impedance, instead of using the static acoustic ohm impedance that you'd enter in, I'm going to load in the impedance with the glass jar. And then I need to check this to tell it to use it. And I'll hit Calculate. Let me find that graph. So this is the graph that was created with uh, with with the solution we just ran. And we can see the effects of those modes a little bit, but our frequency uh, resolution here is pretty poor. So let's go back. We'll select the global tab, global parameters tab. And instead of doing 200 frequency points, let's do 2,000. Hit calculate. Go back to the graph. And now we see the effects of those resonance much more clearly. So it's having a large effect on the output of this speaker, uh, a very undesirable effect. We're uh, putting these big uh, resonance in there, and that's probably going to cause some weird sounds and possibly some buzzing going on. So we don't, we definitely don't want this for the rear volume of a speaker. So let's go now and load in the impedance curved with the damping material that felt in it. Before I run the model, I actually want to copy the undamped case out into buffer A, and I'll plot it. And now I'll hit Calculate. And I've got buffer A with the undamped in the green curve, and the damped is in blue. To make that a little more visible, I'm going to go to the graph controls, and I'm going to increase the weight of these lines a little bit. Let's set them to a weight of three, which is going to be pretty heavy. You should be able to see it better. Uh, so here we've got the curve with uh, in green again is with the undamped. We see these large spikes in the response of the speaker. And with the damping, let's zoom in. The pressure response from that speaker is much nicer, much, much more well behaved. So this is an example of how you can use uh, uh, the SEMA device to measure the impedance of a, of a, of a volume. And then uh, you can import that data into uh, ARIES modeler and use it to predict what the effects would be if that impedance was used as the rear volume of a speaker. But that's really just the beginning of what you can do with, uh, with SEMA and ARIES. Uh, you can measure the impedance of ports, of materials, of horns, measure the impedance into your ear, and you can import that impedance into the modeler to either use it directly in the modeler or see how your material impedance compares to the impedance that you're actually using in the model uh, and then better correlate your model to your measured results. Or you can just use the impedance uh, itself to show you, provide you with some information about how your acoustical system is behaving. So I find the application of it to be just wide open, uh, and I hope uh, hope this has been a good introduction for you. And uh, if you have any questions about the capabilities, uh, you're welcome to contact uh, uh, May at any time. You can uh, email us at support at maellc.com, and we'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you.